Hello, and welcome to Success Tips Global. Today is October the 7th, 2022. My name is Everett Ofori, and I'm speaking from Tsukuba Science City, Japan. It's a great honor for me to speak with Dr. Ivory Vance Nelson, who's achieved a lot of first in his life. He okay. also contributed to the recently published book, Success Tips from Successful African-Americans, Volume 1. Dr. Nelson, welcome to Success Tips Global. Well, thank you so much for including me in your repertoire and in your book. My honor. Now, for the benefit of our audience, where in the United States are you based? I'm, at, I'm living in Houston, Texas. Oh, okay. Well, we uh, hear everything is big is in Louisiana. Texas. Louisiana. <laughs> I was born in Louisiana. Okay. And and uh, I went in the military at the age of 17, served in Korea. Mm. Uh, wow. And um, then got out, went to college, got my uh, PhD, and started my career. Mm. <laughs> I want us to go back a little bit because I really want to understand something about your childhood. Okay. Yeah. So, because uh, sometimes I think uh, there are connections between maybe experiences in childhood and what we ultimately become. So I want to understand how things were when you were a child in Louisiana. Well, I was my, I'm the first child of a family that lived. Uh, my father and mother had three uh, three other kids that died before me. Okay. And and my my first name is indicative of the fact that I live because Ivory is the tusk of an elephant. Okay. And 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 he was a itinerant minister. Hmm. Okay. Um, I was born and in Curtis, Louisiana, and he was a minister. And being an itinerant A.M.E. minister, okay, he he moved around a lot. So my basic childhood was moving a lot. Okay. My mother died uh, when I was seven. Mm. And we I had two sisters that lived. And we were split up as a family. Okay. So, uh, and I think we separated for about six, uh, about five or six, five, six years because we didn't get back as a family. Uh, I was seven, I guess we didn't get back as a family maybe until I was tw um, 10 or 12 years old, somewhere in there. Mm. And uh, so we were living in Shreveport at the time uh, when we got back as a family. And uh, so after moving around each year, one of the things I did not develop, you know, being a youngster, mm. one of the best things can happen is that you have a consistent place that you stay and you have friends, but in my case, I'll, uh, uh, we moved so much mm. that didn't happen in my childhood. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, my, and so uh, when we got back together, and I started about the fifth, about the fifth, sixth grade, uh, I threw papers uh, in the uh, the street post sun in the morning. Okay. Uh, no, the street post times in the morning, and uh, and the street post sun was a black newspaper, and mm -hmm. I sold that on Saturday. Uh, I graduated from high school at the age of 16. I was uh, number five in a class of 250 plus. And my my parents were not very able to uh, send me to college. Okay. So I joined the Air Force at the age of 16. Mm -hmm. And that was back in 1951, by the way. And Truman had just desegregated the U.S. services. Okay. So I went into the Air Force. So, so I went to I went from Shreveport to Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio for my basic training. Okay. And in all of the units that I was put in during the course of my military, I was a generally person, black person. To mm. do that. Wow. Perhaps one of the uh, and, and and during my early childhood while I was living in Shreveport, uh, uh, in throwing papers. Uh, it it kind of developed me into a little business person in the sense that I have a paper route. I I didn't keep books, but I had a very good memory. I could remember when people paid me, they <laughs> paid me, and all that sort of stuff. Right. And in the process of throwing papers, that kind of helped my family 
okay. in, in terms of resources. Mm -hmm. So I guess I was a kind of an independent kid. Just think, at 16, I registered for the service, and the day I went, I had just turned 17. So at the age okay. of 17, mm. I left home. Okay, okay, okay. And wow. so I'm totally on my own. I go to Lackman Air Force Base, and because I was a pretty good student, mm. I got tested. Okay. And and I was tested to, to determine what would be my career pattern in the Air Force. Right. And and in the process of that, evidently I tested pretty well. Mm -hmm. I ended up being placed in at Keesler Air Force Base in Mississippi mm. to, to study crypto crypto analysis of uh, radio operated ports and all of that sort of stuff. And okay. which I would listen to, which you would learn how to do the Mars code, yes. learn how to type and all and all that stuff. Now, in the process of that, one of the first experiences, not as a second, the first real experience I had was when I went to Lack, Lackland Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. Well, I was the only black in the unit. Right. And I can remember a young black, a young white guy from Wisconsin asked me, I would like to see your tail. Wow. He had grown up in Wisconsin. He thought black folks had tails. I probably was the first black person right. uh, he, he he saw. And and also during my basic training, one of the young people who came there during my time mm. just couldn't take it and jumped off of, of a water tower, killed him. Wow. So now I'm remembering I'm still 17. Yeah. And then I, I'm sent to Keesley Air Force Base for my training. Now, when I get to the Kisa Air Force Base, which is in Mississippi, mm -hmm. right above, or around Biloxi, Mississippi, uh, they put me in a barracks. In that barracks were 72 people. Mm -hmm. 71 in 1951 was the white Alabama National Guard. Okay. Mm. Wow. Come in, look, a 17-year-old kid black kid from Louisiana being put in that. Uh, now, I got called all kinds of names and mm -hmm. I got talked about. Mm -hmm. But very early on, I learned that whatever happens, you have to be in control. That you can't control your surroundings. Okay. All you can do is control yourself. Mm -hmm. I learned very early. So I adapted the motto that sticks and stones mm -hmm. may break my bones, but you will never hear a word that will hurt me. Okay. Mm. So that that was kind of my work shield. And then mm. the other work shield was that uh, I uh, said, mm. I'm, I, I'm, I mean, I can beat you in a fight, but mm -hmm. I can beat you with this, right. my brain. Right. Right. I graduated, by the way, tops in the class. Wow. Of 70 mm. Yeah, and I was then, going to ask then, you about that. At 16, were you considered a gifted child or... No, you remember <laughs> back in the fifties. You know, we were we were in an all black school. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, we were smart. We were uh, studied, you know. And I got. I think I was gifted because mm -hmm. I had a very excellent memory. Okay. I, and as a matter of fact, it paid off so much that uh, uh, one of the things I tell people that I could do when I was in graduate school, mm -hmm. I could study, and I could go to sleep and mm -hmm. restudy. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, was, you know, that, was, that was, you know, a, a fantastic uh, uh, thing. And so I, I went, uh, after I finished the school in Mississippi, mm -hmm. they they sent me back to uh, uh, San Antonio to get me ready to go to Korea. Okay. So I went to Korea during the Korean War for two years. Uh, I mean, I didn't stay in Korea for two years, but mm -hmm. I stayed in about a year and a half. Okay. Uh, and during that time, I was listening to the radio calls and traffic of the Chinese communists and the Russians. Okay. And we were recording them and, and stuff. At the age of, 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 of 18, mm -hmm. I had a top secret cryptographic clearance. Wow. Mm. In the military. Mm -hmm. So I stayed in the military. I moved around in the military. I, I, after I left Korea, I came back and moved around at, uh, in bases. And I got out. Uh, uh, of the service, and it's time for me to go to college. I wanted to be an air pilot. Okay. I took, I took the exam, passed the exam, 
But because I did not have two years of college, okay. they would not let me become a pilot. Mm -hmm. And so I decided, I said, well, if I can't become a pilot, mm -hmm. then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to college. Okay. So so I applied to to go to college. And uh being from Shreveport, Louisiana, and in Louisiana there were two black colleges, Grambling College and and Southern University in Baton Rouge. Uh, I applied to the white college called Centenary. Okay. Now, can you imagine this is nineteen by nineteen fifty five? Right. And I'm, yeah, this is a private school, and they didn't know who I was until they just finally they discovered <laughs> I was black, and that created a lot of stuff. They didn't accepted me really. <laughs> they, once, they, once they discovered that who I, that I was black, right. they turned me down. So I ended up going to Graham. Okay. And I go to I go to Grambling and uh, I major in in chemistry and I was a good student in chemistry mm. and 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 um, I wanted to be a medical doctor okay okay so when I I graduate uh in my uh class and so now it's time for me to try to get into grad school a medical mm. school right right and so I, I I and I took while I was in college I took chemistry and physics and biology. And I, I applied to medical school. I applied for assistantship in, chem in chemistry, and I applied for assistantship in physics. And I made the decision that whichever one gave me some help to go okay. to college, that's where I will go. Okay. So my option was I had to have dollars and money, <laughs> right, mm -hmm. uh, to go to college, right. Uh, so, uh. Finally, I get this acceptance to the University of Kansas. Okay. And I go to the University of Kansas and start majoring in chemistry. Mm -hmm. uh, my my selected field of chemistry was analytical chemistry. Okay. Uh, I, uh, I remember now I had a BS degree, and 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 during that period of time, there were several things that are different now by getting terminal degrees. And, uh, I had a BS degree. I do not have a master's. Right. And, and, and the process was that if you come and you pass the four or uh, three exams in the four years of chemistry, uh, then you know you can skip the master's degree okay. and go to the uh go for the PhD degree. Mm. Plus, in the fact, then you have to have pass two languages in order wow. to get your PhD. Wow. So that's not that's not around anymore. Mm. Now uh, so I get to uh, uh, Kansas, and, and because I did not have certain courses at Grambling uh, uh, that I needed, mm -hmm. when I got to University of Kansas, I had to take a couple of undergraduate courses. Okay. At Kansas, now and and they were to to make sure that I was completely uh, qualified, but my all the rest of the stuff I had good grades and stuff. Right. But I always tell people, you know, whenever you meet an obstacle, you have to figure out a way to do it, mm. to take care of it. That is, if you want to succeed and it's all on you. Right. So what did I do? I had to take those uh, undergraduate courses and I had graduate courses. So I told people for the first year that I was there, mm. Friday, Saturday and Sunday, I did nothing but study. Wow. Every Friday. Saturday and Sunday. Wow. In order for me to catch up mm -hmm. and, and, and be there. So I did that. And and I passed my uh, comprehensive full, full comprehensive exam. Now the next hurdle, of course, was to well select a research uh, professor. I did that. Mm -hmm. Then I'm working on my PhD. I gotta take care of my language requirements. Mm -hmm. Okay, I gotta do two. Right. <laughs> well, back in the days in the in the in the early sixties, the the the, the uh, dominant language for chemistry was German. Okay. It, it's okay. So I took I had taken French in college. Okay. So I took the French exam and passed it. Mm. And now I got to get my second uh thing uh <laughs> language, which is German. Right. Never had German in my life. <laughs> I taught myself. Now, that it, you didn't have to learn to speak it; mm -hmm. you had to learn to read it. Okay. So I taught I taught myself, and and the way they tested you in these uh, languages is that 
you would go into the test site and they will give you a page and a half of a uh, of, of scientific French. Okay. You had to you had to in, interpret that, write down what it was saying, mm. and you could only have two errors. In, wow. In, in that. That's a page and a half, and you had to complete that in two hours. Wow. Okay, I passed the French with no problem. Okay. So not German time. <laughs> so I taught myself German. Mm. How to read, read German. Not mm. to speak it, but I taught mm. how to read it. So, and I took the exam in German and passed it. Wow. Wow. And I, <laughs> so now I'm ready to get my uh, go do my research. Mm -hmm. uh, I start my research. And I do my research, and I'm I published about eight technical papers in a, as a PhD student wow. in analytical wow. chemistry mm. while at the University of Kansas. Mm. Now, of course, I got my co-op. The co-op is my uh, major professor. Now, right. while while I'm at the major, while I'm at the University of Kansas, I'm inducted into Phi Beta Kappa. Wow. You know what that is, don't you? It's a fraternity, uh, isn't it? Fraternity? Yep, yeah, but it's the academic fraternity. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm also inducted in Sigma Xi. <laughs> and right. what was the difference? Huh? What's the difference between they're, they're Phi Beta Kappa, Kappa and Sigma? So, Phi, Phi, being Phi, Phi Beta Kappa is the highest, it's kind of recognized as the is the is the cream de la cream oh, okay. of, of uh, academic uh, endeavors. Okay, I understand. And, and, and Sigma Xi is also a scientific endeavor uh, okay. based on your scientific prowess. Mm. So uh, now, uh, so I, I I also spend some time at American Oil and uh, Union Carbide during the summer doing mm. intern work. And then coming back, I finished my from BS to PhD in three and a half years. Wow, that's incredible! <laughs> yeah, and so I I, I graduate, and uh, I am my my major professor nominated me for a Fulbright. Okay, I had a Fulbright in Mexico. Mm. I don't speak, I don't speak Spanish. Uh, but and, and if you go to Mexico and a lot of the university, they teach, although they the Spanish, you can teach in English. Okay. And even back then, so I I I spent uh, about six months in Mexico working with a chemistry department, kind of helping in Guadalajara, okay. trying to help them to establish a chemistry department. Mm -hmm. So now it's time for me to look for a job. So I ended mm -hmm. up now I graduate from the University of Kansas. Okay. I'm the first black person with a PhD in analytical chemistry wow. to graduate from the University of Kansas. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I do that. And I uh come come on to uh get me a job. And so mm -hmm. I I had I, I I interviewed at major universities, I interviewed at the industry, and the industry at that time was just beginning to hire black professional scientists. Okay. They hadn't been doing it. And I said, you know what? If I can do what I did, maybe I should go back to uh to, to a black to a black school. I also had offers from, from major universities to go teach there. So I I ended up going to Southern University. Okay. In Baton Rouge and uh in on the in the chemistry department. So I go there and I start teaching. My home is in Shreveport, and 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 in the state of Louisiana, they restructured the Southern University system, mm. and they established a community college. After I'd been in Southern about two years in Baton Rouge, they established a community college in um, Shreveport. Okay. And so they needed somebody to go up to Shreveport to help them to put that together. Mm. So we put it together. They they asked me to do it, and I went. And I, my job was to be in part, in part, in part to, to, to put in the uh, department of chemistry, mathematics, physics, and biology, the okay. sciences. Yes. So I do that for about two years. Then I said, oh, you know, it's time for me to move on mm. uh, because uh, this wasn't leading me to where I wanted to be. When mm. I got to the universities, 
I said to myself, you know, I I I, I am a researcher. I can do all of this, but I think I I want to be a university president. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I want because some of the decisions that these folks make doesn't make sense to me, and I think <laughs> I can do a good job. Okay. 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 So I start out uh, leaving Shreveport. To, I ended up in Prairie View, which is over in Prairie View, Texas, which is right outside of Houston. Mm -hmm. So I stay there for. 14 years, I go in as an assistant dean, and I leave as an as a, a, a acting president. Okay. Uh, I didn't get the job for the presidency. So I stay there 14 years. Mm. I do a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, I get involved in a lot of things. Uh, actually, while there, uh, we, we, we had a, a good connection with Liberia. Okay. Uh, I actually ran a project in in, in uh, Liberia okay. called in Kakata mm -hmm. uh, in establishing uh, high school. Okay. I wrote a five year grant from the Department of uh, in Federal Government uh, Program, and I got we got five million dollars to help establish a uh, a program at, in uh, Kakata, right, right outside of Mon about fifty miles from Monrovia. Oh, okay. And I went there during the time they had just during the time they had the coup in uh in um in Liberia. You remember? Yes, I don't know. I rem you, yes. you remember that? Yeah. Was <laughs> yeah. it the Sam Taylor? Sam Taylor coup d'etat? Yeah. Yeah, I was actually on the ground when they did it. I almost didn't get back out of the country. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so we 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 did the program. And uh, so I came back to Prairie View, and the, the, the president uh, 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 retired, and I ended up being acting president. And I applied for the job. Mm. And he, he has another thing I always tell people: uh, I didn't get the job, and I thought that was the worst day of my life. Oh, it turns out mm -hmm. that was the best thing that could have happened to me. <laughs> okay, as I look back on my career, right. So what do I do then? I leave Prairie View after the 14 years, and Prairie View is part of the Texas a and University system. Okay. I put out a deal with the chancellor of the system that I would like to come to the system. Mm. And he said, yeah, you know what? I don't have an executive system. So I end up as the executive assistant to the chancellor of the Texas a and okay. University system. First black person to do that. Wow. So. So I stayed there, worked with the system three years, mm. and he knew I wanted to be president. So uh, I in the uh, that was an opening for the chancellor mm -hmm. of the Alamo Community College District right. in in San Antonio. Okay. In San Antonio. Uh, I ended up being selected the chancellor okay. of the Alamo Community College District. Mm. In San Antonio, and if you go to the district, you can see my 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 photograph in the chancellor's office. It's there now. Okay. And I'm the first black and only black to mm. do that. Wow. What what were some I, of the challenges they were facing at the time in that district? Yeah. Well, let me tell you. You know, if when you're in higher education, the challenges are almost the same. It's just different <laughs> people and different. Okay. It's money. <laughs> right, 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 right. It's personal. <laughs> it's competition. It's, okay. You know, I, people always ask me, say, "Well, you a black man?" Well, yeah, I've been president of two white, uh, two white institutions and mm -hmm. two black institutions. Okay. You know? And they say, "What's the difference? The color of the skin and money." <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, because if you have to, one of the thing, one of the things I always tell people, and we get caught up in this. There's process and detail, mm -hmm. but if you're going to conquer and be and be be and do what you want to do, mm. you stay at the conceptual level for making your decision of what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Because you know, always just just an aside. You know, people ask me, say, well, "What's the difference?" Mm. I said, "It's no different than running a a, a, a furniture factory." Okay. I said, he said, I said, being president of any university is no different than running a furniture factory. Mm -hmm. I said, you got to be kidding. <laughs> I said, 
Okay, let me ask you, let me go through the process for you. Okay. This is what I'm gonna mean by conceptual. I said, what are, what are the things, in, in order to make furniture, what do you gotta do? Well, you gotta go cut out a tree. You gotta go find some trees, right? Okay. Okay, in order to, to build a university, what do you gotta do? You gotta go find students. Okay. Same, same concept, different mm -hmm. process to get them, mm -hmm. okay? What do you do when you get the tree into the into the uh, universe? Well, I mean, into the factory. Well, you got to trim the tree. Okay. Trim it, uh, and, and make planks mm. in order to get the planks ready to make the furniture. Okay. So what are you going to do with the student? Bring the student in. You got to get them ready in their, their, their basic uh, education in their mm. first year. Mm. Sharpen them up and get them ready for okay. their career. So conceptually, mm. it's the same. The, the management process yeah, yeah. is the same. Mm -hmm. So so it's not a it's about you can do anything if you if you if you have any interest in doing something, mm -hmm. if you apply the conceptual model mm -hmm. about doing it. Now you may not know a darn thing about the process model yeah. when you do it. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's what you gotta learn. Okay. So I, I always uh adapted myself that you could put me anywhere. Mm -hmm. Now I may not know the details. I have learned the details, right. but I also, but I can. I think I could run it mm -hmm. and manage it. Now that may be just me saying that, mm -hmm. but it so happens that at all of the places, uh, uh, the jobs that I had. Okay, I, I'm 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 at an Alamo Community College District. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a community college. I had three presidents reporting to me. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, right, and so. Uh, we did that. I, I uh, raised money. We expanded the district. We built buildings. Success there. Mm -hmm. Then I decided to say, I want to be a, uh, uh, I want to move on. So I stayed there five years. Okay. And I also have a thing about life is this. Uh, if you're going to be at the top of an organization, mm -hmm. you got to know when to hold them and when to fold them. Okay. Which means you got to know when to come and mm -hmm. when to leave. Mm -hmm. Because no matter what you do at the top of the organization, you can be the best performer out there. Mm -hmm. You're going to make enemies. Okay. So and, yeah, time and, will come. <laughs> and, if, and especially if you're working for a board. Okay. The okay. board that hires you love you. But as you stay, the longer you stay, board members change and shift. <laughs> right, right. And you got to be able to adapt to, to the new change in scene. Mm -hmm. So my, if I had any success, and I think I had a lot of it, is that my ability to 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 understand mm -hmm. what's going on mm -hmm. and to know know, like I said, when to fold them mm -hmm. and 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 go and move on to something right. something else. So I stayed there five years. I do a lot of stuff. We built buildings and we brought in money, expanded the district, raised mm -hmm. the faculty salary. Oh, you know, I was success. Mm -hmm. Then I said, okay, I want to go be president of a of a of a, of a college, a university. I'm sitting there, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, uh, I get a telephone call from a headhunter. It says, um, Ivory, are you interested in becoming president of Central Washington? Would you would you consider yourself an applicant for president of Central Washington University? Mm -hmm. I said, sure, I'd be glad to take take mm -hmm. a look at it. So I'll take well, a look I at think it. your your camera is off. Yeah, my camera is off. Yes. Oh yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I, so I so I say to myself, okay, uh, I'll I'll send you my resume and stuff. Now, this is in Washington, the state of Washington, mm -hmm. and yes, uh, and and in a in a town that there are no very few people of color. Mm -hmm. uh, the in, university is primarily. Uh, white and in and uh, in uh, Indian, and I said, you know, I probably don't have no chance for that. Okay. But lo and behold, <laughs> I ended up becoming president of Central Washington University. Wow! First black to do that. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so I stay there eight and uh, uh about. Mm, from 92 to 90, about seven, eight years. Something okay. Like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I do I do things there. I put in computers. I built a, a, a system such that they can have 
satellite campus to go to the state of Washington. You know, I did the same, and I was a success there. Mm -hmm. uh, so after a while, uh, I, uh, I decided I, I always wanted to be president of a historically black college. Okay. I was even acting president at Privy was a historically black, but I wanted to be full president. Right. So I decided to uh, say, okay, it's time. I'm getting up in age. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I decide that that's okay. Time for me to look for HBCU. Okay. Lincoln University comes along, mm -hmm. and um, I interview for that. Ended mm -hmm. up getting that position. Okay. I tell the uh, I'm in my seventies, I guess. No, mm -hmm. six to nine or something. Like that. I tell a guy, look, I'll do this for three or four years. Okay. It turns out I did it for twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, and huh. that was very successful that I I did that one so well that there's a building named after me. Right, right, right. I read about in, that. Uh, in, in Lincoln University. Mm -hmm. I also built about $350 million worth of stuff on the campus. Wow. Kind of thing. So so after that, I retire. Mm -hmm. And I, I've been retired about, I said, since 2011, about 10, 10 years. Mm -hmm. I'm 88 years old. Wow. You look and, good. <laughs> uh, thank you. And so that's kind of been that's been my mm. my career. Okay, I understand. When you were at Lincoln University, you wanted students to uh, follow some requirements, and there was some kind of a controversy because some students didn't want to follow them. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that, please? Well, I don't remember the issue, but uh, I wanted. Uh, one of the things I always wanted in a curriculum, I wanted, I had, my goal always was mm. to take young people, right. bring them in, give the best of, of uh, education they have, mm. and that when they leave, they'll be able to participate in the American dream. Right, right, right. In colleges and universities, there's a lot of stuff that goes on there in terms of the curriculum and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm that it's there, mm -hmm. it's almost there for the suitability of the faculty. Okay. They've been doing it for 10,000 years. Mm -hmm. And they don't take in mind mm -hmm. that you're bringing these young people in, you're putting them in debt, mm -hmm. and that when you prepare them, they are not ready for the, they're good students, they, they know stuff, mm -hmm. but they could know the stuff that's more re most relevant now mm -hmm. in order to be competitive Mm. In the in today's world, okay. For example, one of the things is you you build a curriculum, mm -hmm. and the curriculum uh, is a hundred and forty credits. Okay. Well, that and if you're taking fifteen credits a, a, a semester, heck, you're gonna be in there five years. So what okay. are you doing to the student? Right. You right. You, you putting a year debt on it. Mm -hmm. No student should have to go past four years. Okay. That's okay. kind of the, the standard. Mm -hmm. And so you rejigger the curriculum. Of the curriculum, mm -hmm. okay, and you make the curriculum, especially the, uh, the the in the in the curriculum you got the major, and mm -hmm. then you got the courses that everybody takes. Right now, you want to make sure that those courses change and and uh, in accordance mm -hmm. with what's going on in the world. I mean, reading and mm -hmm. writing, you know about all of that mm -hmm. stuff. But you need computers, for example. Yes, yes, there yes. should not be any kid that can graduate to graduate without understanding uh, technology. Right. Right. So you got to change the... Mm -hmm. And that's hard. Okay. Because you're up, you up against the faculty. The faculty, right. they, they have a certain standard of, this is the way we've been doing it for 100 right. years, right. and we don't want to change. Mm -hmm. And you know, so I had, you know, I had those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And 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 my my philosophy was, let's consider we're there for to service and to prepare, mm -hmm. not for our own. Yeah, yeah, for our, our own professional. Mm -hmm. We are there for our own professional growth, but our professional growth should be consistent with preparing the best product, and at the at the at the at the cheapest cost to these young people. Because mm -hmm. when they walk out with Think about it. You walk out with fifty thousand dollars worth of debt. Mm -hmm. You marry somebody from the school with fifty thousand dollars worth of debt. You got a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt. You can't make it. No. 
Yeah. So, so that's kind of my philosophical mm. thought process and pattern. Mm. So, and you know, and, and it's and it's hard to change a faculty. Right. It's hard to get faculty members to change what they're doing. Mm. So you know. Yeah. Okay, I understand, Doctor William Bynum, who worked for you at Lincoln University, later on brought you on to work as a provost. Can you talk a little bit about that? Oh, well, I had, uh, yes, uh, when I, I have, uh, one of the things that has happened to me is that because of my experience, I've had people, I had uh, quite a few people wanting to pick my brains and wanted mm. me to mentor them. Right, right. And when I came, when, when I hired him at uh, uh, Lincoln University as my vice president for student affairs, he mm. asked me would I mentor him to become a university president. Okay. And so uh, I tried to do that. And mm. then he left and he ended up being president of Mississippi Valley first. Okay. And I went there mm -hmm. uh, to be his interim provost uh, mm. to kind of help him get started. Mm -hmm. And then when he left Mississippi Valley, he went to Jackson State. Mm -hmm. And he asked me would I come in and do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I tried to come in and, and, and use my skill set. Mm -hmm to help him uh, uh, get started mm -hmm. uh, into what uh, uh, what he needed to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've had about uh, uh, about three of the president of the Mississippi Valley has, mm -hmm. uh, was a mentor, a mentee. He was a mentee. Mm -hmm. And I got uh, several people who become deans, who mm -hmm. become been mentee. Uh, since I've been retired, mm -hmm. I'm a chemist. But I have done lectures in the business department at mm -hmm. TH, Texas Southern University. Mm. I've done lectures in the education department mm. at Texas Southern University. So I try to uh, make myself available mm -hmm. because I have a skill set and a career that's unlike anybody. Right, right, right. right. Mine is different, you know. Mm. You know, I've been president of four institutions. <laughs> that's <laughs> incredible. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Uh, four <laughs> institutions, two black, two white, community mm -hmm. college, major system, mm -hmm. you know. So I've been around a little bit, mm -hmm. traveled the world a lot. Mm -hmm. So I do have, you know, I'm not bragging on myself. Mm -hmm. I do have some stuff that I can relate to you. Mm -hmm. and, and and one of the things I have a little, a little thing that when I go to lecture, the first thing I do, mm -hmm. I make a square. And in that square is three, four, four times, maybe 16 dots. Okay. And I, and I ask you to connect the dots without taking uh, with lines, without taking the pencil off the paper. Okay. Now, what happens mm -hmm. is most people will go do this. <laughs> okay. They forget one principle. Mm -hmm. A straight mm -hmm. line has is infinity. Okay. So you take it and bring it all the way down, go outside mm -hmm. of the box, mm -hmm. go back up and go up. Okay. You, okay. okay. You go across. The idea being is, mm -hmm. You mentally, mm -hmm. in most issues, mm -hmm. you put your you put yourself in a box. Okay, and you got to learn how to think mm -hmm. outside of the box. Okay, mm -hmm. because life does not come in things do not come in, in mm -hmm. just square things, mm -hmm. and that's why. And I do a lot of talk about conceptual thinking okay. and process, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and 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 because. Like it's it's my belief, and I could be wrong, mm. that a person who really understand conceptual thinking mm -hmm. can tackle most problems okay. if they smart enough. Now they may not over the detail, right? Right. But they can come up with a, a concept mm. of how we're going to approach this. Right. 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 Mm. Mm. Okay. So you talk a lot about leadership. What advice do you give to followers? To followers. <laughs> Yeah, if you <laughs> <laughs> because not everybody can be a leader, right? <laughs> so I don't know about that. <laughs> See, my my thing is, uh, you uh, what's the definition of leadership? Okay. Now, what is your definition of leadership? My definition of leadership would be someone who has a vision and is able to bring people along. Well, you you're close, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and I have a simple one. Okay. A leader is one who makes good things happen and prevent bad things from happening. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Now, what, now, what have I just done? I can apply that to anything. Right, 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 right. So then if you, whatever you do, mm -hmm. you want good things to happen. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. And whatever it takes to make those good things to happen mm. is what you want to be. Mm. When the bad things come up, you, you want to prevent them and stop them. Okay. And in order to do that, you have to be able to bring people along. Mm. 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 So I try not to make it, because one of the things, we can be so ethereal and, and make stuff so difficult. Right, right, right. When, when, and when you can make it in simple terms about so that you can use it in the everyday thought process. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. I mean, we all have the intelligence to know when something good is happening. And, mm. and we all have the intelligence to know something something is bad is happening. Mm. And you want to prevent that. Right. The good things take to you what you want to get done. Mm -hmm. The bad things stop you from getting done what you want to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, that has nothing to do with chemistry, philosophy, psychology. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I, just practical. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. And, mm -hmm. and 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 like I said, maybe I'm just odd. Mm -hmm. But by mm -hmm. taking that, uh, knowing that everybody doesn't think like like a chemist, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and knowing that you're dealing with ordinary folks, mm -hmm. and you know, you don't try to be up here. You try to come down and, mm -hmm. and uh, be at a place where they can understand you, mm -hmm. and that you and and they can feel comfortable with you. Mm -hmm. And and they can look at you and say, well, you know, he he understands me as an individual rather mm -hmm. than putting it in such a way that I'm I'm the hardy tardy guy sitting up here yeah. and you down here. Did you discover your your uh, inclination for science at an early age or later on when you go to the university? Well, like I said, I, uh, I wanted to be a medical doctor, and I oh, knew okay. that it would. It would uh, the, right. Now, why did I want to be a medical doctor? It's mm. interesting. You must go back in the day. Back in the day when I went to college, mm. you know, most black people didn't have a. You could be a preacher. Mm -hmm. You could be an undertaker. Mm -hmm. You could be a doctor. Mm -hmm. You could be a dentist. Mm -hmm. We didn't have, you know, scientists and chemists right. and a, 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 a country boy in a, mm -hmm. in, a, in a in a southern town. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. You. What was your role? Who were your role models? You went mm -hmm. to school. A teacher was your role model. Right, right, right. The doctor in the community was mm -hmm. your role model. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. You know who the undertaker was. Now, <laughs> you know, I don't know whether it's your role model or not, but you, <laughs> you know what they, they were doing. The, the minister, you went to church. Right, your right. Role model. Mm -hmm. So what happens to individuals? This is who you see. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. So that so that so that was you know that, that was the reason. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know I'm kind of just like I <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's so what what do you do for fun these days? How do you spend your time on a day to day basis? Well uh, not, not not I don't do much of anything right okay. now. I still I still work with young people. I've been trying to I got stacks of I got my uh uh, scrapbook, put scrapbooks together, and mm -hmm. and and I like I said, I have done some uh, before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I was doing lecturing, uh, pro bono at the university. Okay, I, so, I know would call me to come in. Haven't done any of that since for two years. Right, since, right. since the pandemic, we haven't gotten back to the. But you know, I, I make myself available to do the stuff like that. Okay, right now, you know, just. Taking life easy. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And maybe my final question: uh, Lincoln University has a lot of uh, notable alumni. Uh, one, uh, the Squam Nkrumah from Ghana, right? Diazipo yeah. from Nigeria, Terugut Yeah. So I... that's. Uh, <laughs> what do you think uh, is the ethos of that university that produced so many such incredible people? Well, you must remember, uh, Lincoln was founded out of uh, by, by the Presbyterian Church. Okay, and 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 its founding was 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 controlled primarily uh, uh, by by graduates. I um, mean, the, the the teaching the minister wanted to produce uh, ministers for Africa. Uh, okay, kind of thing. 
and 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 uh, they couldn't go to Princeton, mm -hmm. and and, uh, and so I guess they decided to uh, put the, put the school together, and it had uh, a, a, from its inception mm -hmm. a Afri an African connection. Okay, now, I spent a lot of time in Nigeria. Okay, uh, matter of fact, I was in. Um, uh, I I got caught up in one of the presidential races. Okay, uh, <laughs> I was very friends of the governor. Of, I'm forgetting the. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and 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 you know and and, it, and the politics of Liberia is no different than the politics. <laughs> you no, know, I mean it's 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 sad to say. That the tribal, which you still got the tribal warfare going yes, on in yes, the country. Yes, yes, a, yes. a country like Nigeria should be way a Sweden, a black right. Sweden, right? Right, right, right. With the reserve, with the resources that it had, mm -hmm. and with the people, but it, it, it's it's still fighting the, the the differences in the tribe. Right, 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 right. And so, and, mm -hmm. and I guess it'll be there until maybe every. I don't know. I spent a lot of time. I spent. I, actually, we were uh, wor working with uh, a school in uh, Nigeria, and and, uh, and uh, I used to travel over to Nigeria um, maybe two or three times a year. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And we had uh, quite a few of uh, African uh, Nigerian students. Okay. On the we, had, we had several, maybe four or five. Mm. Of Nigerian faculty people. Okay. On on on, on the campus. Mm. So that's been a long, long time with Africa, based mm. on the fact that they were trying to prepare ministers in mm. the early part right. of the of, of their career. Mm. You mentioned that you get the chance to talk to young people. On this platform, what advice would you give to young people, especially those who are confused about what they want to do? Well, all of, like I. Yeah, I got a. <laughs> it's interesting that you asked that. I have a grandson who just uh, went off to college. Mm. He's kind of one of. He's out there just like most typical young people. Mm. And I told him, I said, you know what? Only you, only you, <laughs> can determine what you do. Okay. If you if if you want to succeed, mm. you are going to have to do it. Mm. Nobody can do it for you. Mm. So what, whatever happened, mm -hmm. you are in control of that. Mm -hmm. You can't blame it on anybody. So mm -hmm. if you want to be X, mm -hmm. then you got to do everything that's required for X. Okay. If you want to do Y, then you have to do it. And the thing that I tell them, no, if only you can make yourself successful. Nobody mm -hmm. else can do it. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't want to do it, and you don't want to participate in it, mm -hmm. if you try, you're not going to do your best. Mm -hmm. And the most thing I say, you are in control of yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you don't understand that, you, mm -hmm. you can't blame, well, the teacher didn't teach me. Mm -hmm. said, Do you know that if you're going to college or university, that's not the job of the teacher to teach you. <laughs> right. so, te teachers are guides. Mm -hmm. You have to go and learn and read and mm -hmm. practice and, mm -hmm. and succeed. Right. I know, you know, so. It's, that's it's a powerful your, message, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if only you can do mm -hmm. it. Mm, mm, mm. Well received. Thank you so very much for taking well, the I time. Enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I don't know what you're gonna do with me, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm I'm going to post it um, on Success Tips Global Platform. Yeah. Thank what, you again. What is that? It's on YouTube. It's on okay. YouTube. Yeah, and then I will share it on LinkedIn and on Facebook. Okay. Yeah. So it's uh, it's going to grow. People are going to see it. Yeah. And I think you have a very important message. So thank you. What, so would, much. My what would you interpret my message to be? Well, from what I got from it, you started off with a lot of confidence because to say that I want to be president, it takes something. There has to be something in there for you to be able to do that. And so, and to become president of four universities. You must have had a lot of confidence to begin with. And then, of course, your final message that everything depends on what you do. I think it's also a very powerful one. 
because sometimes people make excuses and maybe uh, one that many people point to is uh, racism. Now, when we talk about the US, for example, but from the message you are giving, that may not be a powerful enough excuse for us not to do what we need to do. Okay, thank you. Because, you know, everybody, you know, I always say when you point your finger, this mm. one goes there and this one is back here. Right. It's you. Right. And, 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 and there's no other way for you to interpret it. Don't blame mm. anybody. Right. It's right. you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. I really enjoyed it. Okay. And, my and, uh, when you post it up on, would you send me a link or something? Certainly, I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that. All right. Okay. Bye for now. Bye for now. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. Uh.